Hi guys, welcome back to K-World. Today I'll be summarizing the 2020 movie Honest Candidate. With a plot spoiler alert, let's get to it. Yu Sung Suk is a congresswoman in her third term, running for re-election for the fourth time. She has portrayed herself as a woman who lost her parents at a young age, and was raised by her grandmother Ark Hee, who is a selfless woman. Sung Suk has learned to be selfless like her grandmother, and has entered into politics to help the poor. But she is very corrupted. Park Hee Chol is her loyal assistant. Sung Suk and her husband Bong Mun Sik live in a small apartment, and she even convinced Mun Sik to join a badminton club to gain more votes. However, every night with Hee Chol's help, Sung Suk and Mun Sik sneak out of their apartment to their actual big house. Both Mun Sik and his mother are demanding, making Sung Suk use her political power to do their work as they please. Sung Suk takes part in a live debate with other candidates, and the argument heats up between Sung Suk and Nam Yong Sun, who is one of the opposing candidates. Yong Sun accuses Sung Suk of fraud in her charity foundation, which she named after her grandmother. Surprisingly, Sung Suk and Yong Sun are actually working together. They meet for a meal with Kim Sung Po, another congressman who orchestrates Sung Suk's campaign. Their dinner and plans are secretly filmed by a hidden camera in the room. Hee Chol notices an employee rushing out and handing the video to reporter Wang. Hee Chol only manages to see the vehicle's number plate and informs Sung Suk and the others about it. So Sung Po instructs his secretary Ms. Yoon to follow reporter Wang and crash into his car, making a deal in exchange for the video. At night, Sung Suk receives an urgent call from Hee Chol. She travels with him in the dead of night to a remote resort. Apparently, her grandmother is not actually dead. Sung Suk had falsely claimed her as deceased to gain sympathy votes. Or he is furious with both Sung Suk and Hee Chol for their lies, and considers revealing herself to the public. However, both Hee Chol and Sung Suk persuade her not to do so, explaining that they might end up in prison if the truth comes out. On their way back it starts raining heavily, and Sung Suk's shoe also breaks. Hee Chol spots a nearby hut and leaves Sung Suk there to get an umbrella and shoes for her. While waiting, Sung Suk notices a pile of rocks, and places a rock on it, praying for help in winning the election. At that moment Ork Hee begins praying too, asking for Sung Suk to stop lying. As the two women pray, lightning strikes the stone pillar. The next day, when Mun Sik brings up the topic of his mother, Sung Suk casually admits how annoyed she is with her. This surprises both Mun Sik and Sung Suk. The couple then receives an invitation for a live radio broadcast. During the broadcast, Sung Suk continues to answer the host's questions with brutal honesty, unable to control what she says. After the interview, Sung Suk, Hee Chol and Mun Sik gather to discuss what is wrong with Sung Suk. Sung Suk confesses that she has lost her ability to lie. Later, she attends a book event for her autobiography, where she again finds herself unable to lie. She admits that the book was actually written by a ghostwriter, and that they hired part-timers to buy the book to make it a bestseller. Kim Jun Young, who is a reporter, becomes curious when he notices the change in Sung Suk's behavior. So he decides to investigate her. First he goes to her apartment and is surprised to see the bills, suggesting she actually lives there. At that moment, Sung Suk and Hee Chol arrive, so Jun Young quickly takes the letters with him, because he becomes unable to fit the letters into the letterbox. While they ride the elevator, Jun Young returns the letters and hurries off. Hee Chol drops Sung Suk off at her house, and when he returns he notices that the previously empty letterbox is now filled with letters. Realizing someone was following them, Hee Chol tries to catch the reporter, but Jun Young drives away. He tries to take photos of Jun Young's vehicle using his pen, but none of the photos capture the license plate. However, Jun Young has been recorded in Hee Chol's dashcam video when he checks it. When Sung Suk and Mun Sik return home, they find Mun Sik's mother there. Once again, without being able to control what she's saying, Sung Suk honestly expresses her annoyance with her and her son. Mun Sik's mother insists on having a candid conversation, and though Sung Suk initially resists, she ends up talking openly with her. After hearing everything Sung Suk had to say, Mun Sik's mother leaves in shock. Days pass and Sung Suk's campaign starts to fail because of her honesty, so her popularity starts to decrease. Even her major supporters like Sung Po stop supporting her because of her honesty. So she starts seeking medical help and even consults shamans, in an attempt to return to her old ways, but none of these efforts work. Eventually Hee Chol convinces a strategist named Lee Woon Hak who specializes in election campaigns, to help Sung Suk with her campaign. When Sung Suk meets with Woon Hak, she explains her problem of being unable to lie. Woon Hak agrees to help them with the campaign. He advises them that even though Yong Sung is in agreement with supporting Sung Suk, he might change his mind if he sees a chance of winning. Woon Hak strategically contacts all the powerful and influential people in Korea to gain their support for Sung Suk. As a result, Sung Suk's popularity starts to rise. Woon Hak also starts exposing Yong Sung's flaws. In response, Yong Sung reveals information about Sung Suk's son Yoon Ho. He exposed about Sung Suk giving birth to him in America, so that he wouldn't have to participate in military enlistment, and even the prosecutors can't locate Yoon Ho. Woon Hak confronts Sung Suk about this and urges her to hold a press conference about her son. Sung Suk refuses to do so, and admits that she is not Yoon Ho's biological mother. 
She doesn't want to involve him in the campaign because she doesn't want him to get hurt. Mun Sik somehow convinces Yoon Ho to return to Korea and prepares him for military enlistment. Due to the controversy surrounding her son, Sung Suk is forced to hold a press conference. To avoid the press conference she tries to make herself sit by immersing herself in an ice tub and collapses on the day of the conference. While in the hospital, she sees news reports about not being her son's biological mother. She goes straight to see Yoon Ho, fearing he might be upset by the news, and decides to return home to check on him. Jun Young follows Sung Suk and discovers the real house she lives in. He waits for the housemaid who is a foreigner, and she has been pretending not to speak Korean in front of Sung Suk and her family, but is actually fluent in Korean. Jun Young manages to convince the housemaid to provide him with information about Sung Suk. Sung Suk confronts Yoon Ho, and to her surprise, Yoon Ho reveals that he already knew Sung Suk is not his biological mother. Apparently Mun Sik had told him everything when he was just 8 years old, explaining that Yoon Ho is his son from an extramarital affair. Sung Suk is furious to hear this. Later, another candidate named Ji Sun arrives at one of Sung Suk's meetings and accuses her of partnering with the Taewon group and being involved in corrupt activities with them. Apparently before getting into politics Sung Suk had fought against Taewon group for robbing the poor, but now has partnered with them. He Chul tries to divert Ji Sun's attention by playing Sung Suk's campaign song. However, when Ji Sun persists, He Chul disrupts the crowd by falsely claiming there is a bomb, helping Sung Suk escape the event. Upon returning home, He Chul insists that Sung Suk and her family return everything they received from the Taewon group. Even their house is rented from the Taewon group, so reluctantly, Sung Suk decides to move out as well. With Woon Hak's strategy, Sung Suk regains her position as the number one candidate. They decide to change her catchphrase to honest candidate, and Sung Suk's popularity continues to rise. One day, Sung Suk notices a woman protesting in front of the Ork Hee Academy, which is run by the Ork Hee Foundation. She learns that the woman's son, Suo Ki, attempted suicide after receiving a low grade. When she asks the staff to investigate, they advise her not to do so. Jun Young meets with Suo Ki's mother and decides to look into the matter. He discovers that the Ork Hee Academy initially offered scholarships to smart but poor students. However, as the academy gained a reputation, it started admitting wealthy children. Depending on the money their families donated, these wealthy students began receiving higher grades than the genuinely intelligent students. This led to a decline in grades for the smart students. When the smart students complained to the administration, their grades continued to drop, and they eventually lost their scholarships. Jun Young spreads the news, and soon it starts to affect Sung Suk's ratings. Ork Hee decides to visit Sung Suk's office and confront her about the academy. She runs into Woon Hak in the elevator, but he doesn't recognize her, even though she acts suspiciously. Ork Hee then talks to Sung Suk, who confesses that she can't lie anymore. Ork Hee realizes that her prayers have been answered. Together they return to the stone pillar where the lightning struck and begin praying to undo her wish. Woon Hak who has been following them, is shocked to see that Ork Hee is still alive. Ork Hee and Sung Suk pray for hours until nightfall, but nothing seems to happen. Ork Hee returns home with Hee Chol, having changed her name and identity as Hee Chol's grandmother. On her way back, Ork Hee collapses, so Hee Chol takes her to the hospital. Sung Suk goes to meet Jun Young and explains that she initially started the foundation with good intentions, using the money she received after battling the insurance company of Taewon Group. She also admits that she doesn't know how the foundation is currently being run or what happens to the money obtained from admissions and bribes. Woon Hak on the other hand decides to stop supporting Sung Suk and joins with Young Sung because Sung Suk lied about her grandmother's death. Sung Suk also learns from them that Ork Hee has been admitted to a hospital. She rushes to see Hee Chol at the hospital and insists that he shouldn't stay there. He Chol, feeling hurt, points out that Young Sung hasn't made her grandmother's situation public because they haven't found any evidence yet. Besides, Ork Hee is admitted to the hospital as his grandmother, and since she's in the ICU, no one can visit her. He Chol expresses his frustration, saying that he supported Sung Suk because of her fight against the insurance company of Taewon Group for using deceptive fine prints to deceive their customers. He still believes in her ability to do good for the poor. He encourages her to do well in the campaign, reminding her that everyone has put their lives on the line to help her. Sung Suk then goes to see Ork Hee in the ICU. The two share an emotional reunion on seeing each other, and Ork Hee genuinely blesses Sung Suk for her campaign and tells her to do it right. A day before the election, Ork Hee's condition becomes critical, and as she passes away, she prays for Sung Suk once again, asking for her to become a responsible person. A light shine on the stone pillar. Meanwhile, Sung Po meets with Sung Suk and informs her that he has decided to withdraw his support and join Young Sung instead. When Sung Suk argues that she allowed him to use her grandmother's name and manage the academy, Sung Po points out that her grandmother is not actually dead, and when this truth comes out, her candidacy could be cancelled. Desperate to regain Sung Po's support, Sung Suk tells him that her grandmother is indeed dead, surprising herself with a lie. She rushes to her husband in excitement, realizing that she can lie again. However to her shock, Mun Sik informs her about Ork Hee's passing. 
At the funeral just before the cremation, Sung Po and Yang Sung demand to see the corpse before it's cremated. When He Chul struggles to prevent them, Sung Suk arrives and insists that they leave. When they refuse, Sung Suk tells them that she will withdraw from the candidacy. Sung Po becomes convinced when she brings up her inability to lie and they walk away. He Chul is shocked to hear this, so Sung Suk explains that she can lie again. He Chul then shares that he had a meeting with reporter Wang, who had secretly filmed her. He managed to persuade him to hand over all the videos related to Sung Suk. Woon Hak also becomes aware of reporter Wang and his secret filming of politicians from Yong Sung. He Chul takes Sung Suk to a secret room at Orki Academy, which he had seen Sung Po use before. He instructs her to stay there until the end of the election, and hands her the video evidence's leverage. While in the secret room, she discovers various documents related to the academy. As she goes through them, she learns about all the corruption and realizes that Jun Young had been telling her the truth. Feeling devastated, she goes to Sul Ki's mother, who is still protesting in front of the academy, and sincerely apologizes to her. Suddenly Woon Hak arrives having learned about the flash drive from reporter Wang, and demands that Sung Suk hand it over. She contacts He Chol as she is being followed and attempts to escape in a car. However Woon Hak and others manage to corner her at a dead end, and threaten her to step out of the car. Just then Mun Sik and He Chol arrive, and they fight back Woon Hak, Sung Po, Young Sung, and their gang, giving Sung Suk time to escape. Sung Suk heads straight to Jun Young with a flash drive, and tells him that she wants to confess to everything. Before the ballot counting, Sung Suk withdraws from her candidacy. Just as she is about to confess everything, she gets surrounded by reporters who demand to know how she obtained the flash drive. It turns out that reporter Huang has mistakenly given He Chol the flash drive containing corruption and misconduct evidence of all the politicians, instead of just Sung Suk's corruption. This leads to the exposure and investigation of the politicians. Sung Suk voluntarily agrees to cooperate with the investigation regarding the Ork He Foundation, even though Sung Po is the one behind the corruption. She receives a prison sentence and writes a book about her experiences in prison. Two years later, she returns to the mayoral race and is called in for a debate. While preparing for the debate, both Mun Sik and Yoon Ho desperately pray for Sung Suk to go back to her old ways. Just as the debate begins, lightning strikes, and Sung Suk feels the shift. With that, the movie ends. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.